back and recommend that, that we see no changes to the ordinance we sent them, and therefore we hardly approve uh, them to hear it on the second hearing. Is that correct? Can I motion it back to City Council? Send it back to City Council. Commissioner Urban. Second. Second, Commissioner Gonzalez. Pardon? So 
I think we have accomplished that. I would like to uh, pass out to everyone a copy of uh, the artistic renderings of where the LED board will go, which was prepared by uh, A.D. Advantage LED, the one of the eight Advantage LED. Um, from that company, and Ms. Uh, Judy uh, Dennis will be here testifying to expand on the report for the sake of uh, making everybody aware of what we are really dealing with. I think this will be an appropriate time to introduce. Yes, uh, I can mark it as. Uh, no. He, he won, and they all won. He won. Uh, 
community services or community uh, emergency situations. Absolutely, yes. Uh, I have no, no questions or further questions from Mr. Lugo now. He's here. Any questions that you may have, I'd be happy to, as I said, there's three other individuals who will be addressing the specifics of the other uh, issue. Commissioner, you heard Mr. Lugo's testimony. I have a couple of questions. This is Shell, of course. Commissioner Shell. The, the public service aspect of it is nice, but it's essentially a, an advertising uh, medium. Uh, it's, a, it's too bad we don't have a picture of it. trying to re recreate or create what it would look like at night. Is this going to be on 24 hours a day? It will be on 24 hours a day, but it, with uh, Judy, the expert, she'll tell you that at night it dims about 2 to 5 percent of light, so it dims at night. Two to five percent. Of it. Just be like a huh. activity of TV almost like two percent. Uh, uh, is this going to show motion? Yeah. Oh. Just a for a second, Mr. Shelton. It will dim by two percent or dim down to two percent? All the way down to two percent. Not visible. But I'll let you answer that question. Sorry, Mr. Shelton. All right. No, that's a good distinction. I thought I thought it was about two percent. <laughs> Uh, is it going to is it going to show motion? Will there be movement on on this? No motion. It will be just like a bang for that specific amount of time, whatever the DOT. Well, well, my concern is that how how much of a distraction would it be to so drivers to to drivers to traffic coming coming down the street? Commissioner Joseph Steiger, traffic engineer, traffic expert, is here to testify. There, there is it in my in my view. Um, I don't know if the city would, doesn't want specific things up there. But I'll, I'll work with them. But I mean, it's it's advertising. We, uh, I don't know what restrictions we have, but I'll, I'll start. I'll start. I don't know whether I don't know the, whether the city has any restrictions on what I can advertise or not. Though. Business or what time of uh, settings, and perhaps it might be uh, of uh, uh, something that might be offensive, or perhaps. Uh, Absolutely not. Um, um, I think 90% of the advertising you see in the highways, either movies, uh, um, uh, other businesses, spring, other businesses in town. Uh, it'll just be more, more, mostly focused on other businesses in town. Mainly focused on other businesses in the town of Elizabeth. Yes. And that might not be offensive. What's just the name of my club? Just the name or a picture of something? No, just, just, just names. No uh, pictures. Is there an agency that handles the ASP there? Um, you could hire an agency, yes. I'm not, not going to hire an agency. No, if, if I want to. It's your board. You're going to have an agency to put those things up? I'll work with the agencies that uh, bring in most of the uh, advertising funds. We have a team that's in um, my business that takes care of advertising. Commissioners, are there any other questions? Commissioners, follow up. Do you have any, do you have any anywhere else? No, it's the first one. I'm using it. Does it make a difference? Because it, it makes a difference. I know what you're telling us, but money is money, and you're going to spend all this money on the LED, and you want something left there. Yeah, I'm going to go both routes. I'm going to do my own advertising, and we're going to hire a firm, an advertising firm to help us out with that also. Do you want to share your concern? Make it equal? I will not allow any of this stuff up. Yes. Yes. How you know that? How would the advertising have 
Uh, state police have the direct line, or the city has the direct line to our office, and we just load it up in the feed. It's 24 hours, seven days a week. So this is done through the internet? The, the computer is uploaded over the camera. So public service announcement to allow you to do that the city had an Amber Alert. Thanks, so. My concern on that Amber Alert is that's one more. One more. Why would you mean that this is the first court? For myself. For yourself. Yes, it is. You intend to hopefully put up more of these? I sure will. In Elizabeth? If it's allowed, yes. Commissioners, are there any other questions? Uh, I have a basic question. Well, why do we need an LED display? Or, it's, we've gotten the wall without it thus far. I have serious reservations about it. Why do we need it at, the, at that location at this time? Just hold on a second. Commissioner, I want to recognize Vice Chairwoman Ross who just arrived. I feel the times are changing the way we advertise, the way people find out information on a daily basis. I think when people see something, you know, there and it's, it's bright instead of a regular one that's 50 feet in the air and doesn't really cause any tension, that if you have an emergency or whatever, an advertising or whatever it is, people recognize that in this, in this time of uh, advertisers. Are there any such other such boards in the city? I believe you have them on the highway. I don't think there's one. On, there is one on the New Jersey Turnpike, which sits 100 feet above the ground, as opposed to this one, which is 10 feet above the ground. Uh, my concern with what you just said is, based on looking at your exhibits, it's visible in only one direction, and for emergency purposes, unless you're standing in that direction, you're not going to know there's an emergency Amber Alert. You're not going to know. So I agree with the first comment. I mean, it's nice you want to give us a public service on this. But I don't think that's something that we're going to consider yes or no as a result of what you get and what you know. Uh, it's a, well, I think that what my client was trying to uh, inform the board is that, as I stated in my opening remarks, is that of course this is a business venture, and of course we want to make a profit to my clients to make a profit. This, let's be honest with this. At the same time, new technology, which is emerging almost daily, also creates an ability of individuals and my clients, hopefully future business, to provide a service that is not available now. For example, you're right, Mr. Chairman. By the photographs, and you're absolutely correct, the board is pointing towards or be more visible. Tomorrow's Avenue. Is that a big deal? Amber Alert or a big deal silver alert? Well, if the individual happens to be on Morris Avenue and sees it and reacts, then it's a hundred percent successful. Agreed, but the bottom line is that I get alerts on my cell phone all day long from Union County, from the city of Elizabeth. When there are Amber alerts, I get them from the state police, and so do a lot of other people. And I don't have to hold up a billboard for everyone to see it. I'm saying to you that. That's a very nice start, but that's not what we're deciding whether the city is going to benefit from this or not. We're going to decide whether this is an appropriate use for the in a commercial zone in the city. And, and the bottom line is we're going to go through this thing and we're going to listen to your experts and then we'll make it. I actually agree. From the very beginning, this is a profitable, hopefully profitable venture. It has some side beneficial effects. I hope that it will think in the terms of business. Has a beneficial side. You know, what I, you know what I do for a living, and the bottom line is I'm very pro business. And my, you know, I, the bottom line is I'm sitting here now. My job is to make sure that this is the best thing for the city of Elizabeth. And that, I don't have a thousand cents to not enter that, that equation. I agree. Yeah. Uh, Commissioners, are there any other questions for this? For this not Mr. Sanchez, when you point it out the next year. Uh, I called uh, Tony uh, Dennis, a representative from the uh, 
from the LED manufacturer to give you some insight into the workings of this uh, LED board.
and I do massive military projects. I will go three very large projects for our, our nation's military right now, doing exactly what HD Boards wants to do. They're going to be doing it on the basis to generate revenue. We have to be very sensitive to our environment. Subsequently, the pre-programming of the rivals and things along that line, the duration of the advertising that was being up there. Um, our company does a lot of programming and are capable of handling the content creation. Are only is put up from <laughs> No, they are actually generated. Our, our boards, when they're sold, the client gets a computer, and the software is on the computer for being able to do the scheduling. You build the messages right then and there. You can do it in just a couple minutes. And then you just basically hit send, and it transmits the, to the board where there's another onboard computer that holds all of that information. And so you can pre-program it here in advance, or over an hour in advance, or two minutes in advance. It doesn't really make any difference. It's very flexible. And the flexibility of it, as you said, you can change it at any time. Yes. And normally, in your, in your experience, what is the time that uh, some advertising would be uh, on? The industry standard is between 8 and 10 seconds. Obviously, the owner of a digital billboard wants the 8 seconds. The more impressions they get on the board, the more revenue they're going to generate. Uh, but the brain does absorb more information than 10 seconds. In Houston, we have a five minute. We can't change even a digital billboard but once every five minutes. So that is, that is an important yes. Now we have just, they just opened things up. We've got 13 new digital billboards that are going up in, within Harris County. Uh, but it's a really a partnership to deliver services to the community. And, you know, Houston, we had a lot of bad weather. We've got hurricanes and things along that line. So our city has really been holding back for many years on the technology and has made the decision as of last month that they are going to be putting 13 new uh, 1448 digital billboards in and around the city of Houston. That will be selling advertising. Uh, which, by the way, is really wonderful for the community because the studies that have been done shows that when local advertisers have a new medium that they can take advantage of, that boosts their revenue as well as the client's revenue and also brings more tax revenue to the city as well. So it's kind of a win-win in many different areas. It's more tax revenue. Well, the new business owners are going to be doing a higher level of business. The Small Business Administration did a massive study on these things and they stated in a public uh, study that any local business that utilizes LED technology is going to see a minimum of a 50% increase in, in business, up to 150%. Now, I've never seen that in my career, but I do routinely see uplift in business between 35 and 42% if the board is handled properly. Nothing but family-friendly advertisement should ever be allowed. Um, we have to be sensitive to all of the community. So we as a company, when we're doing contract creation for our company, for HD boards, or any of our other clients, we have parameters that we work with them. Um, and they're in very good taste. And then if we have national advertisers, like Coca-Cola or someone like that, they are providing content to us, which is thereby a size for the digital billboard display. When you, when you talk about 2%, 3%, 5% rises at night, because I think a concern may be, uh, you know, how, uh, you know, how is it to look at it? And how can you, can you compare what that brightness may be? You know, it really, because you tone it down so much at night, it isn't like you would think. It's really up to us to program it properly. And, you know, we like the feedback back. I love it when someone from the city is on location during the day when we're first doing the testing over the first couple of days so that we do get it right, so that it is where it needs to be at night. The last thing we want to do is create uh, a situation of, of uh, an happiness. Do you have any places in school New Jersey? No, I do not. I think it's a little small, and I think there's one somewhere in New Jersey that I don't recall. Anything nearby New York, Pennsylvania? Not really. 
we've done quite a bit, really all over the country. Um, and you're, you're absolutely correct. This part of the country, in certain areas, just kind of seems to be coming up in the industry. I will say that we're getting an awful lot of inquiries from this part of the country now, where the bulk of our inquiries have been through the middle section of the country and a lot of the west and the southern parts of the state. We've got a lot of words all along the southern. At the risk of sounding provincial, I'm surprised that we have to go all the way to Texas to find a word like this. There are not, no companies like it. Oh, I'm sure there. I don't think there's any major manufacturers that are actually in this area. So the advantage here is that you manufacture, you then train, yes. program, yes. so you do the whole thing. So yes, sir. We do absolutely everything. The installation, all the engineering. Um, we do everything to code. It doesn't matter whether it's in New York, California, or wherever. We follow the codes specifically. Um, we go to great, to a great, great degree to make sure that all of the people that are involved in the project are well informed and uh, hopefully on board. I have no questions over commissioners. Are there questions from the Stennis? I have a question. I hear a voice. Um, sure. All right, all right. Commissioner Brown. In the in this particular area, we have a lot of small. I would think for a sign like this, you would want in a highly populated area for revenue. You talk about revenue. Wouldn't you want to be where a lot of people are trying to bottle attention? More so than just these little tiny, you know, it's, it's in a, I know it's area very well, and I'm not far from it. So it's, it's just like it's locked in. I, I don't understand why, you know, I know it's all about location, location, location. But I, I don't know how to it's a surprise how wonderfully effective they can be in this in an area. I've only been here twice, and I can go walk the area on my first trip. There are a lot of small to be businesses there, and there is a high influx of traffic. Um, so the, the overall revenue may not be as high as what you would get on a digital billboard that is in a very extremely high traffic area, but also the cost per impression in those areas become, but also the cost per impression for those types of billboards becomes out of reach for the small to medium business. When you put a digital billboard in an area like what is being proposed, you really open up the advertising medium for that small to medium business. And the cost is low because there is not as much traffic count in that area. So it becomes much more accessible. And in talking uh, with uh, Hector over the last few months uh, about this project, one of the things that he has been very clear in, to me is that he wanted to benefit his neighborhood. And I've heard him say that many times. Uh, he wants to keep the cost low so that the local folks can benefit and advertise on board. So for him, it's, it's, it's not just revenue. I mean, the man is very successful in his own right as it is. You know, so he has a dual purpose here. I have a question. Mr. Chalmers, did I understand you to say the, the advertisements would change every two or three minutes? Or would, would they be steady over a period of time? Generally speaking, they have a whole period of eight to ten seconds. And then they change very quickly. There isn't a lot of movement or transition time. That transition is done in less than one second. Does that answer your question? So there'd be a constant uh, turnover of images and messages? But they are static images. Well, it's still a movement. It's still a movement of messages, even though they're static. Well, they come up this way and off. And then they come well, that's up. Movement. That's movement. That's movement. Well, for in most They're like the air you see at the shopping mall where it goes up. It's not LED, and then another one comes down, and there's a uh, that's what you're saying the nature of it is. And every every few seconds. Yes. Images and gestures. Yeah, I understand. Uh, uh, I'm 
like hacking into the system and getting a message up there. I mean, anything's possible way to do it. No, sir, these have a secure IP address. They are very, very secure. Um, mm -hmm. The only time that I've ever heard in my career that happening is on very low technology that's used for street signs and directional signs out on the highways. You, you don't know, you don't know many 13 year olds. So. <laughs> you don't know many 13 year olds, and uh, nothing is totally secure. Uh, that, that would be a concern of one or two hacking in the system of uh, this computer operator. In my career and in our company's history, it has never happened since 1997 when we started manufacturing. All right. Any other questions? Chair, I have a question. Earlier, uh, earlier you stated that. Earlier you stated that you were an expert in the positives and the negatives on digital LCD billboards. In your expert opinion, what do you see being the most profound negatives about this? Being in your expert opinion. Quite frankly, I, I don't see any real negatives. I think there are perceived negatives by people outside the industry that either don't want to see the technology moving forward or Say there were negatives. Well, like I, I may have not explained that quite clearly enough, but I don't see any personally. What are the perceived negatives? I think some, uh, the, the one thing when I come into meetings such as this, the biggest question that is always answered is what can we do about the brightness? They do not have. The biggest perceived negative is the brightness. The biggest perceived negative. Is there any history of uh, when these billboards go up within the first couple of months, more automobile accidents, take the right off the road to see the sign? Because it's bright and, and you're going to notice it. Yes, you are. Are there more accidents there? There have been many studies done, and there has honestly been no negative or any proven statistics that these have impaired uh, any type of driving. They have less impact on drivers than people eating a sandwich, working each other's cell phone, or putting on their mascara. Now, the federal government is in the process of a study that is supposed to be all-inclusive. I'll be honest with you, it's been in process for three, four years now. They are not moving very quickly on this, but there has been many independent studies that have been done over the last 10 years. And it's been very interesting to me, uh, one in particular actually pulled the community outside of uh, Indianapolis, and uh, where there were a lot of digital billboards that went up over a very short period of time. The community likes them, the general consensus is. But no, no statistics that prove that there is an increase in traffic accidents as a result of people viewing a digital billboard. Joe Steiger, who's a traffic engineer, will be testifying that perhaps we should address the safety concerns of the video. No, I'm just asking your expert witness who seems to know a lot about it. I read all the studies when they come up. Commissioners, are there any other questions before I ask some questions? I'm sure this question has been asked and I probably missed it. How, how long is this like, how long is this billboard uh, working on a daily basis? It can work uh, as much or as little as the, as the owner of the billboard and the city will allow. Generally speaking, they run 24 hours a day. Wow. The basic thing is, is, is programmed to work 24 hours a day. Uh, during the day, the one comes a day. Right. The, the only difference is that the brightness during the day, for lack of a better word, uh, is brighter during the day so that you can see. The evening, as was previously testified, the Brightness is substantially reduced to 5% and less, so that it decreases any brightness and therefore it creates basically no uh, negative impact on, on what we may be walking in. And this is also a business decision. We may have been on the other point, we may be on the 24 hours a day, so that we'll close the department. Most of the business in that. Is that a city's word? Victor, but there is no city ordinance on LED billboards. So there is no, uh, the applicant can profess to do certain things, but not force it. So if they say we will tone it down, we talk to the court, the original ordinance. But there is no, 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 there is no
there is one fact that we have to keep in mind. The Lord is bright at night. It cannot be seen. It has to be dim at night. It cannot be seen. Without talking about the, the intensity of the dimming, the control of the city is not going to go out there with a light meter and control the intensity of the LEDs. So there is no word that's, you know. The, the, the area that this sun is going out, the stores are not open 24 hours a day. The only thing that are open late at night in that area are some of the nightclubs that are down that area. Otherwise, there's no activity down there. The stores are closed. The, the other question that I have is on cost. You're talking about six images a minute, 10 seconds an image, six images a minute. What happens if you don't sell six images a minute? What happens if you end up with the, the thing stuck as a, a picture like this picture in front of me showing the same image 24 hours a day because of the cell out? We build the slides that basically will advertise the board being up for sales. Exactly. We also do community service. Um, I would encourage our customers to do free advertising for the YMCA and what I call filler advertising is community service as they're getting You also refer to keeping costs at a reasonable level. Yes. Give me a rough idea of what that means in dollars and cents. Well, I would have to be able to do that. I haven't done the research as to what the impression cost would be in that location at this time. I couldn't speak to that. You wouldn't do that before you could afford it. Generally speaking, traffic count analysis needs to take place. A traffic, yeah, traffic expert here, what do you do? <laughs> well, sir, honestly, to be honest with you, we don't go to that level until we are know that the board can be done. But you're willing to sell the board to, to this company, not knowing whether it will achieve a viable dollars and cents without the traffic count, without knowing that... Oh, I thought you were asking me what a specific impression would cost. That had a rough idea. Yeah, that had a rough idea. I know what the board's going to do. Anywhere from one to five cents per impression depending upon the traffic so, volume. One to five cents per impression, so six impressions a minute, 30 cents a minute, times 24 hours a day, times the price of 30 days a month. It can be very profitable. I mean, you've got, you've got standard billboards that are out on the freeway. Yeah, yeah, I know about their location. I know exactly what they right. want to spend. Right. And depending on their location, the same board can be in the middle of nowhere and the one right at the entrance of the Lincoln Tunnel, right. there's going to be a big difference in price. The disadvantage is that you're paying for one image for 30 days and people will not see it for the first time they see it. Correct. Because that's a proven fact. People see a sign and then it becomes part of the background. That's correct. The advantage here is that the sign changes. That is correct. I have a question. Yes. We have developed uh, what we call a smart chip uh, about three and a half, four years ago. The smart chip is in the board, and when anything goes wrong with the board, we can remotely access the board and run remote diagnostics on it, just like you can a car. So the downtime is very, very minimal with our product. It's one of the advantages that our company has over some of the other manufacturers. And LED lights are best for everything. Oh my goodness, they've got about a living room lifespan. They do generate heat, uh, not a lot of heat, but we use uh, thermostatically controlled push and pull fans within the unit to pull fresh air through, uh, and so it keeps the, the temperature very nice. So that it basically elongates the lifespan of the unit. But the maintenance on them, to answer your other question, is very limited. Uh, there are very few, you'd be surprised how simple they really are. Uh, we, if we run the diagnostics, Spray on the 
this gray line that they put inside of the pickup trucks. Okay, it's called rhino lining. We are doing a rhino lining on the outside of our cabinetry. It never chips, it never peels, it never has to be. Uh, you can you can run a, a, a piece of glass across it and it will not crack. These signs do get looking pretty nasty as they get older, and I train people in this industry, so I watch them age. I take a group twice a year and look at all the competition, all the digitals in our area, and I've watched them age. And so that was part of the opportunity. We spent over two years uh, developing this, this line so that they will always look brand new on the outside. Any other commissioners have any questions? I have one more question. With yes,
all digital billboards meet certain size criteria, and you can't go and call a billboard company and say, I want to, I want to put advertising on me by 24. They don't make them, they're not the standard size of the billboard industry. So this truly is not a digital billboard in the, in the true sense of the word. Um, but I know that if it needs to be off at night, your, our client is willing to do that. If we need to elongate the duration of the messages, that can also be done very easily. And set in stone tonight, if y'all would like to, we can put together some conditions that hopefully will create an environment of cooperation. I mean, there's, you know, what's going to happen, whatever we put together as far as conditions, they're going to change. Um, and they're going to be looser, to be honest. Because of, you know, I read a lot of trade stuff, and so I have to tell you, I read a lot of things in regards to different types of permitting that is fraud or honor, so on and so forth. So it is a technology that is going to have to be uh, managed, but I, I just wanted to let you know that those are the four things that most cities want to work with, and the client is more than willing to work with you and uh, yeah. put some of those conditions in place at this time. And you can go back and answer your client for this. If that's the case, why was there no outreach before this point to sit down with Mr. DeVanger, the department consultants, to come up with some self regulating rules? If you're willing to do this, then I'm going to suggest the following that we, we stop at this point, we make an appointment. Mr. Benegar and I will try to be there as well. And let's sit down and come up with some, some regulations. Obviously, I'm going to tell you right now, there are going to be ordinances drawn. They will not apply to you because the state law says that we can't do that. But they will apply to everyone who comes after us. I believe that this young lady in front of me is an expert. I have gotten the lesson today. I appreciate everything you said because this is brand new to me. The TV that's hanging on the wall is an LED also, but this is a much bigger TV. It is a much bigger TV. And the bottom line is we have some concerns. Like I said, the neighborhood there is dark, right? other than a couple of places that are open. We can get your tongue wet. Right. So let's turn off at midnight. So, but those are the things that we need to sit down and talk about. And and I don't want to. I don't want to. I'm not in a position to regulate. I'm not city council. And whatever I do here tonight, if I put regulation on you, that's setting precedent. And I can't do that at that point. I would really like to sit down. And maybe if you're asking for something different, you can say yes or no what you're asking for. So if you're, Mr. Sanchez, if your client is willing to. Mr. Chairman, thank you for the. My client is more than willing to sit with Mr. Meek, with Mr. DeVangre, and you, and whomever the board would like to, to try and work out something that is going to be acceptable, palatable to all parties. And perhaps, and I'm sure you will be, very instrumental in the city setting up guidelines and ordinances for future use. But I would like and I don't know whether the board is capable of it. Are we in the right board or not? Do we meet the conditions? Because we, we are willing to work with the city, but at the same time, if we work with the city and come up with a plan, and then we come back here and in, in, in Julie's So I'm going to say this, whatever happens, whether you're in the right board or the wrong board, you're still going to meet that man over there because he works with both. The difference will be that the chairman of that board right now will be willing to come and sit down with you and have a discussion in advance. And he might not like what we come up with. Because my, my, my concern is the concern is a time is a time frame concern. I understand. If we I understand. we're willing to work with the city and if we meet with, with, with Victor and, and, and with you and, and we are here in the July meeting and then all of a sudden you say no it is not a planning board. Then we write that square one. We're in the Board of Adjustments, so there's no meeting in August, we're in September or October. Well, there's no meeting here in August either, so that's fine. 
That's what I want to be solving in my life. So you want us to vote tonight with conditions? With conditions. Okay. But that, that's a difficult situation to do, to vote with conditions tonight. I have no, I have, I have no problems. My client has no problems. Take a, a journey of cabling from now, a meeting with Victor. You're just saying that you want to be guaranteed that when you come back here that we will continue to hear the cases? I can't make that decision. I got nine commissioners sitting here that have, this, have, have eight more votes than I do. So the bottom line is, I make a suggestion to you, Victor. You want to comment on this? I mean, this. I understand what Mrs. Sanchez is going to. You're going to sit. You're going to sit down and talk to us, and then we're going to say, "Sorry, don't meet the conditions," and go to the other board. So the question would be whether. Can we? I mean, I'm more scared on this one because I agree with you. I'm not sure. We... No, I agree. It's not fair. It's not fair. And I said, come on, I'm a firm business person. I understand the business of this. But understand this is new to me, and, and I, I learned the question. But I, but I, you know, but, but that's the end. Yeah, that's the end. I'll talk to the board at the very before, during the break. Let me briefly spoke with Mr. Sanchez. I'm sorry. Right before break, I briefly, during the break, I briefly spoke with Mr. Sanchez. And it was uh, my opinion that the billboard, and that it is a billboard, so please don't call it, don't call it out of the because it's your sign and your, it's a different application. So this is an advertising bill to be here at Trent Distribution. Um, under conditional uses, under section two, the last one on my page, on page two, to add. I feel that this application meets almost all of the conditions. There's one that's objective, though, and that's to add. And I'm going to go right to to add. And understand that if this board feels it does not meet the subjective condition, then this board does not have authority to hear this application. But if, this is not a permitted use of design, it's a condition. So we have to, this application has to meet every condition to use to be heard by this board. If there's one issue, if there's one condition that's not met, this board doesn't have authority to go to the zoning board. And briefly, the conditions are A, that the plan of the board do not intrude on residential areas. Sorry, I'm going to do that so I can understand. 2A, the plan shall ensure that the plan do not intrude on residential areas. And the closest residential area, and it goes on to say within 600 feet. There are residences across the street, but it's not a residential area. It's not zoned, and those residences are grandfathered in there for Arizona. But I feel that this condition A, then this condition B, that the plan will ensure that the billboard messages do not intrude on places of assembly and, and churches and the like. Condition C, Plans shall ensure that billboards do not unseasonably intrude on scenic vista. Obviously, it does not, it's not a scenic vista area. Uh, 2D, plans shall ensure that billboards do not interfere with traffic safety devices. Uh, so, then this billboard is behind the traffic safety devices. Item E, the plan shall ensure that billboards do not unreasonably obscure business signs. And I think the applicant does a pretty good job of showing. Thank the applicant does a pretty good job depicting that the sign is not obstruct any other business signs. But the last one, F, is a subjective one. The plan shall ensure that billboards remain in reasonable harmony with the existing aesthetic character of the area in which they are located. Billboards shall conform to design limits specified in the plan with particular attention to size, height, and illumination. Now, you know, that is really looking to in keeping with the neighborhood type of design uh, criteria. Um, we know we don't have an ordinance going into particular of uh, average billboard advertising design. Uh, but the Mars Avenue is a corridor that we're currently studying with the assistance of King University to make it the Cobble corridor. 
so the king is looking to, as it seeks to expand, is seeking to now, now expand on campus, seeks to expand off campus, including the entire North Carolina corridor. We are doing some planning studies at King University, and the logistical lizard is studying this corridor itself. Um, the fact is, you have to determine does this billboard, LED billboard, with this condition, if you feel, and I'll read that condition again, condition F on page two of your, my report, the plan shall ensure that billboards remain in reasonable harmony with the existing aesthetic character of the area in which they are located.
think it may be a good idea uh, if perhaps testimony is heard this evening regarding the uh, F, regarding the aesthetic value or the aesthetic character of the area. Mr. Lincoln as well as Mr. Uh, Steiger regarding. Um, and, and then if that is the case, it is a really dumb question. If for some reason after that we decide that it doesn't meet the aesthetics, then you've just wasted an hour's worth of time. But at the same time, but I just, I, I'm going to say this. At this point, the commissioners understand what's going on. And I'm going to, I, I, I think for the sake of um, argument, I'd like to hear what the commissioners have to say. If the commissioners decide, then that testimony will be brought to the other court. If they decide that it meets, that it meets this condition, then we'll go on with the hearing. But I think at this point in time, we have to make this decision. Well, that's what I was going to say. I thought that's what I said. I can bring Mr. Lincoln as well as Mr. Steiner to address specifically the aesthetic uh, and the, uh, the, the uh, harmony we have in it. Right? And the commissioners can make that decision because it appears from Mr. Venegas' point of view that the other points are, 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 are met, even though we can address those too. And, and, and then we can say, okay, that. I, 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 No. Oh, no. Okay. So we're up to F. Do we want to hear testimony of the fact that F is met? I've been more comfortable with my testimony. Okay. So then let's proceed and hear the testimony. Mr. Comfort, before the player goes into it, just one other thing is uh, this particular area is not used to Giving conditions on approval many times, but this is the first time that we've seen us like a small billboard. We've seen larger billboards, which are very regulated in the city. They're separated by 2,000 feet. They're supervised, but smaller LED billboards is something we just have not seen. Um, I think uh, board members should take some time. Maybe, maybe I think just personally, I don't know if we want to. Board members to go back out to the look at how many signs are there already, and try to get a feel for them before they make a mistake. Because it's just a subjective item. Uh, I think you have to go back out there one more time, maybe, look at it, to make a subjective read, uh, to look at the amount of billboards in the area. There are other billboards in the area. Uh, there's so much of buildings, there's some, because uh, uh, once you make this determination that says the president, that that any other building in the area belongs to the building. Mr. Benegger, if I may, I think that, I think that we need to give the commissioners credit. I'm sure that all of these commissioners are very much familiar with the, with the area, probably have visited the area in anticipation of this application being heard, and, and, and therefore I think they're very much familiar with what's there and what's not there. I think that for, for, for the simplicity and, and the expediency of making a decision that should be beneficial to the board as well as to the applicant, that if, if we, if the commissioners have already agreed, and I believe that they have agreed, that the only issue that they have in the conditional use is F. Let's hear the testimony regarding F. If the commissioners agree that we are the right board, then we are more than happy to meet with you and get some parameters and come back next month and then get a full load of the application with the conditions and hopefully we're done. Well, it's your application. I don't, I don't I do not disagree with okay. your session. I'm just saying that in life for this board, in fact, they're very used to make this is a little bit subjective. Normally we don't have this much discussion over a little time. I, I, think, I think that uh, one of the reasons that I wanted to She's full of information. It was educational for me when I first met her, and I, fo I found the education that she gave me, and I heard it today, completely beneficial. 
And I think that that's what the board needs to know, not only for this education, but for future applications anymore. Yeah, we will take to heart a great deal of it. And, and she, was kind of, she was kind enough to put her card on the front of this uh, piece of paper there. So, Mr. Chairman, this is, this is, uh, the, the bottom, bottom line is, uh, I, I'm going to say this to my commissioners. I believe that every one of these commissioners has been to the area because I know that they are diligent in what they do before they come before this board, whether they were there this week or whether they were there a month ago. I think everyone in this room has been and has seen, and, and I don't want to delay that, but the bottom line is I'd like to hear your traffic expert, and I, we have another case here today, so I'd like to hear your traffic expert. I'd like to hear, I'd like to hear uh, Mr. Leo Cavallo, and I then will leave it at that point We'll stop. We, we will, or do you want us to then make a decision on the aesthetics? Well, I think that's the intent to make a decision on the aesthetics because if the decision on the aesthetics is a positive one, then we're in the right way. Then we'll do this, and then if we're in the wrong, if we're in the wrong board, just don't go into this thing. Mr. Chairman, yes, I say it. I tend to agree with our city plan. Say it again. I tend to agree with the picture of city plan. And then we do need ample time to visit the we visit this site. I do agree with Victor, our city planner, that we do need ample time to visit this site. That's my opinion. Secretary. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask now I'm gonna ask an informal poll of the board that that's the case. Vice Chairwoman, do you feel that you need to go back out there and again? So look, you're not voting on this, you're, okay. Maria? Say it again. Say it again. You know the site. Commissioner Nunez? Do you feel you want to go back out there and look again, or do you feel comfortable? No, I feel comfortable. You want to go back out, okay. Commissioner Fidalis? You do not need to. You. I would like to see what a civil war looks like. Yeah, but unfortunately, you heard me ask the question as to what is around here, and there is nothing similar. No, not in the city, but in the area. Not in Jersey. I believe that there's one put up at the same company in St. Peter's College, in the city of St. Peter's College, in Jersey. There's a city. Okay. So you'd like to go back and have a look. Commissioner Brown? I am very familiar. So I think we're split right now. We're split. You decide to vote. I'm the side of the vote. You're the side of the vote. Yeah, Mr. Chairman. That's why they take the big bucks. <laughs> that is the beautiful what we all get. You know what? That was the question I asked before if there was a side. I don't know. To be very honest with you, if there's a sign in Jersey City, I'd like to see it. I wish I could. You know, we've known that before. Okay. 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 Is there one on Route 17? Someone says on Route 17. Uh, uh, one, Ms. Dennis, is that one of your boards on 17? I really can't answer that, honestly. I'll be here. I'm here. I'm here. She just says she has to. You want to come up here, please? So the credit can hear you. Right, I'm sorry. Is it 
approximately the same size as the sign you're planning to put up? A little small. A little small. Seven feet by nine feet. Victor, Victor, do the math. Seven feet by nine feet. Sixty-three square feet, that's a lot smaller. This is 300. No, this is 200. 203. 203, and what's this one again? That, that wouldn't hurt us. Say that again? That wouldn't, that wouldn't help us much. To look at that sign and look at something smaller. Yeah, that's
this is not the zone. You get a you get a four to two you win. Okay. Should I set up? Oh, Connie, if you get a copy of the transcript of what you missed before you came in, very short. Then you can you can yeah, you were here the first time you missed about ten minutes this, on this case. If you get a transcript of that, then you definitely can sit in on that one and, and, and pick up the that. I would suggest you do that. Right now the decision is that they that we're gonna go out and we're gonna make the aesthetic decision. I cannot guarantee what you guys are gonna say. Are we gonna make that decision tonight? Are we gonna make that decision tonight? Not with it. I can't make that decision without saying what I what the board looks like. And I don't think anybody else can. That's why we're doing it. I mean I'm bending over back. And, and in the meantime, while we're doing all this, I suggest we start sitting down with Mr. Beck and the neighbor. And the question was, should I raise me to Victor or to you? To Victor. And Victor will let me know what the meeting is. And if I am available, I will. Make sure you're You don't know what my schedule is like.